June 2nd, just after 9 in the morning, while the world watched Etna's eruption from afar, a NASA satellite flagged something no one expected. An invisible gas cloud, undetectable from the ground, spreading rapidly above Sicily. Lead scientists called it not normal. More than routine volcanic steam or ash, this was a colorless, odorless threat slipping past every standard alarm. Why did it take space-based eyes to see what local monitors missed? And what makes this plume so dangerous that experts scrambled emergency protocols within minutes? The answers begin with the anomaly that changed everything. At 924 Coordinated Universal Time, a silent alert flashes on the mission dashboard at NASA Goddard Center. The satellite's automated plume detection algorithm, trained on years of Etna's routine outbursts, hesitates for a split second. A new spectral anomaly is logged in the raw data stream. Ground teams in Catania scan their feeds and see nothing unusual, just haze and faint sulfur. But the satellite's ultraviolet sensor, orbiting 775 kilometers overhead, records a sharply defined gas column spreading east over Sicily. The system tags the event as unclassified. Within 90 seconds, the anomaly's coordinates and intensity are relayed to the European Space Agency, Copernicus Hub. The frame metadata pins the moment, June 2, 2025, at 9.24 and 58 seconds, coordinated universal time. The gas cloud's footprint stretches beyond the summit, invisible to every camera and every chemical sensor on the volcano's slopes. On the ground, no alarms sound. Local air quality monitors report only minor fluctuations, well within seasonal norms. Yet the satellite's spectral profile tells a different story. A dense, colorless mass, undetectable by human senses, moving rapidly with the upper winds. A lead scientist's message appears in the mission log. Spectral signature does not match standard Etna emissions. Recommend escalation. The note is timestamped and archived. Emergency contacts at Italy's INGV monitoring center receive a flagged data packet. For the first time, a volcanic gas cloud over Etna has been caught in real time from orbit while ground stations are left in the dark. The anomaly's spectral fingerprint captured in the satellite's level one data becomes the focus of an urgent investigation. In those first minutes, the only evidence of the cloud's existence is a string of numbers, coordinates, timestamps, and a warning that something in Etna's breath is not as it should be. At the heart of Etna's gas detection is a pipeline built on advanced spectroscopy and machine learning. As soon as the satellite's ultraviolet sensor flagged the anomaly, Raw radiance data streamed into the Copernicus Processing Center in Darmstadt. Within minutes, teams at the European Space Agency and NASA fed these numbers into a suite of retrieval algorithms, each designed to tease out the precise chemical identity of gases that the human eye cannot see. Sentinel-5P's tropomy instrument, orbiting at 775 kilometers, measures sunlight scattered by the atmosphere and records subtle dips in intensity at wavelengths absorbed by sulfur dioxide. But the real breakthrough comes from how these signals are processed. AI-driven models scan the incoming spectra, comparing each pixel's fingerprint to a vast library of volcanic gas profiles. This allows the system to distinguish between routine sulfur dioxide emissions and anything that falls outside Etna's historical range. The pipeline is fast. From the moment the satellite passes overhead, it takes less than 20 minutes for the data to be cleaned, calibrated, and transformed into gas concentration maps. NASA's Atmospheric Infrared Sounder, AIRS, runs in parallel, using thermal signatures to confirm the presence of high-altitude plumes. Each instrument has its strengths, with Tropomi excelling at ultraviolet detection and AIRS excelling at infrared. Together, they form a cross-validated record of the atmosphere above Sicily 
catching even faint invisible traces that ground sensors miss when winds carry gases away from the crater. Every step is logged and time stamped. The system credits both the instrument teams and the AI developers whose algorithms are now trusted to make the first call on whether an event is routine or cause for concern. What emerges on the scientist's screen is not a photograph, but a matrix of spectral lines, each one a coded message from the volcano's hidden chemistry, waiting to be decoded before the next satellite sweep. On a split screen inside the mission control room, the raw spectral data from Sentinel-5P's Tropomi instrument appears in real time. At the top of the frame, a set of annotated peaks draws the scientists' attention. The most prominent feature sits at the wavelength for sulfur dioxide, an unmistakable marker of volcanic activity, well within Etna's typical emission range. Yet just beyond the SO2 absorption band, faint residual lines persist. These do not correspond to water vapor, ozone, or any of the standard atmospheric gases cataloged in the instrument's reference library. A NASA Air scientist leans in to highlight overlapping confirmation from infrared channels, where the same SO2 structure is mirrored against a background of stable thermal readings. The annotated spectra stretch horizontally across the screen, with digital callouts pointing to the ultraviolet dip at 310 nanometers and to a cluster of minor deviations between 320 and 340 nanometers. The lead scientist from the European Space Agency's Tropomi team uses a stylus to trace the outline of the main SO2 trough, then circles the unexplained residuals. Each of these features is time-stamped. June 2, 2025, 092458 UTC, and linked back to the satellite's orbital pass above Sicily. Instrument logs confirm the data's integrity. There are no calibration errors, no cloud contamination, and no sensor malfunctions. The residuals remain after all standard corrections, prompting the team to flag the frame for deeper chemical analysis. On the dashboard, the system cross-references these lines with historical profiles from Etna and other volcanoes worldwide. Nothing matches precisely. The scientists exchange measured comments about the reliability of the, the detection pipeline and the need for additional ground confirmation. For now, the only evidence of the invisible cloud is this spectral fingerprint an objective, machine-logged record that challenges the boundaries of routine volcanic monitoring. On the monitor, a spreadsheet fills with numbers, columns labeled sulfur dioxide, carbon dioxide, and a string of UTC timestamps match the satellite pass over Etna. The lead geochemist, badge clipped to his lab coat, begins calling out figures. At 924 and 58 seconds UTC, the satellite spectral analysis calculates a sulfur dioxide column density peaking at nearly 7,000 metric tons per day. This value stands well above Etna's seasonal baseline, which typically hovers around 1,500 to 2,000 tons per day during, during periods of low activity. The spike is not just a brief blip. The elevated sulfur dioxide persists for several consecutive orbits, each pass confirming the anomaly with fresh data. Next to the sulfur dioxide numbers, the carbon dioxide readings tell their own story. While Etna's gas output is always rich in carbon dioxide, the ratio of carbon dioxide to sulfur dioxide usually follows a predictable pattern, shifting only gradually as magma rises or cools beneath the summit. On this day, the ratio diverges from its historical range. Instead of the expected 3 to 1 or 4 to 1 carbon dioxide to sulfur dioxide, the satellite data suggest a ratio closer to 1.5 to 1, a compression not seen in recent years. The geochemist double-checks the retrieval algorithm for errors, cloud cover, surface reflectance, instrument drift, but the numbers hold. Each data point is time-stamped and cross-referenced against the instrument onboard calibration logs. A side-by-side -side comparison appears on the screen. 
contrasting the current sulfur dioxide and carbon dioxide values with the five-year running average. The spike in sulfur dioxide it stands out as a vertical wall, while the carbon dioxide line dips lower than expected. The anomaly is not just visible in the raw numbers. It is confirmed by the system automated pattern recognition software, which flags the ratio as a significant deviation from Aetna's established emission profile. The dataset includes not just the peak values, but the persistence of the anomaly over several hours, ruling out a transient glitch or a passing weather effect. The team pulls up archived data from previous eruptive phases, 2017, 2021, and early 2025. None show this particular ratio, nor do they reach the same sustained sulfur dioxide intensity without a corresponding surge in carbon dioxide. The numbers suggest a shift in the volcano's degassing regime, something that cannot be explained by surface venting alone. Every data point is logged, annotated, and tagged for further review. The spreadsheet grows, each cell a record of invisible chemistry. For now, the only certainty is the numbers themselves, a sulfur-rich, carbon-lean plume, persistent and out of character for Aetna's recent history. The anomaly in Aetna's gas output has scientists searching for answers beneath the surface. Across the control room, a geochemist leans over the fresh data, tracing the carbon dioxide to sulfur dioxide ratio with a steady finger. At first glance, the numbers hint at a significant departure from Aetna's usual degassing rhythm. But the question is not just what the gases are, but where they are coming from. Aetna's volcanic system is notoriously complex, fed by a web of fractures and magma pockets that reach deep into the Earth's crust. Most eruptions draw their gases from shallow reservoirs, but the current readings suggest a different story. The unusually high sulfur content paired with a dip in carbon dioxide raises the possibility that gases are rising through a newly activated fracture system, one that might connect directly to the upper mantle. Such a pathway would bypass the usual chambers, allowing volatiles from much greater depths to escape with little warning. No one in the laboratory is ready to declare this a proven fact. The theory remains just that, a working hypothesis grounded in the numbers but demanding more evidence. To test it, the team plans a series of isotope analyses. Helium isotopes, especially the ratio of helium-3 to helium-4, serve as a fingerprint for mantle-derived gases. Elevated helium-3 levels would strengthen the case for a deep source, while a standard ratio would point back to more familiar crustal origins. Alongside helium, Carbon isotope tests on the carbon dioxide could reveal whether the gas is magmatic, sedimentary, or a blend of both. Isotope results will be decisive. These laboratory steps are more than routine. If the isotope results confirm a deep mantle connection, the classification of Aetna's current hazard would need to be revised. A direct pathway from the mantle could mean more volatile rich eruptions in the future or a new kind of degassing event that challenges long-standing models. For now, the scientists proceed with caution. The roadmap is clear. Collect fresh fumarole samples, run the isotope analyses, and compare the results to decades of archived data. Each step is logged, each sample tagged with the date and time of collection, building a record that will either support or refute the deep fracture hypothesis. As the samples are prepared for shipment to the laboratory, the geochemist reviews the protocol one last time. The stakes are high, but the evidence must lead the way. Only with a complete set of isotopic data can the team begin to answer whether Aetna's invisible gas is a sign of deeper changes beneath Sicily or simply a rare twist in the volcano's long and unpredictable story. Sulfur dioxide, colorless, and heavier than air, can slip through communities unnoticed. When a volcanic plume rises to cruising altitude, the threat extends far beyond the crater. On June 2, 2025, satellite readings placed Etna's invisible gas cloud 
at altitudes between flight level 200 and flight level 350, right in the path of commercial aircraft. These gases, undetectable by pilots or passengers, can corrode engines and compromise air quality inside the cabin. Air traffic control relies on real-time data to reroute flights, but a gas cloud that evades ground-based sensors leaves a dangerous gap in response time. On the ground, the risks change shape. Sulfur dioxide irritates lungs and eyes, especially for children, the elderly, and anyone with respiratory conditions. In rare cases, heavier volcanic gases like carbon dioxide can settle in low-lying areas, displacing oxygen and creating pockets where breathing becomes impossible. The 1986 disaster at Lake Neos in Cameroon stands as a warning. There, a sudden release of invisible carbon dioxide from the lake suffocated over 1,700 people in a single night. While Etna's open slopes and strong winds usually disperse gas, the potential for silent exposure remains. Protezione Seville officials monitor these developments with urgency. Their protocols depend on accurate detection. Without it, communities downwind could be caught unprepared. The invisible nature of these gases means that by the time symptoms appear, the window for safe evacuation may have already closed. For aviation and for life below, the margin for error is measured in minutes. Teams from INGV arrive at the volcano's flanks, carrying cases packed with portable multi-gas analyzers, ultraviolet spectrometers, and air sampling drones. Each device is designed to catch what the stationary stations missed, fleeting pockets of sulfur dioxide, carbon dioxide, and any trace gases that might escape in shifting winds. The rush to deploy these instruments is complicated by rugged terrain and the unpredictability of the plume's movement. Every hour lost means a wider gap in the data, and the invisible cloud continues to drift beyond the reach of traditional monitoring. In the nearby city of Catania, the uncertainty ripples through the community. At a small hotel near the coast, the owner scrolls through a growing list of cancellations. International guests, spooked by news of a mysterious volcanic gas, have begun pulling their bookings. The Regional Tourism Board releases a statement urging calm. Online travel platforms show a 40% drop in reservations within days of the first satellite alert. Guides, drivers, and small business owners brace for a summer with empty rooms and shuttered storefronts. A local NGO representative calls for greater transparency, demanding that I, NGV, and international partners share real-time data with the public. Without clear information, rumors spread quickly, and residents worry about whether schools should close or if evacuation routes need to be prepared. Scientists and civil protection officials scramble to coordinate but the lag between satellite analysis, ground confirmation, and public advisories leaves a vacuum that misinformation quickly fills. The scene on Etna's slopes is one of urgency and frustration. Portable sensors are calibrated on the fly, but the plume's path changes with each gust of wind. Drones launch, collect air samples, and return, but the data must be processed and cross-checked before it can inform any public warning. Meanwhile, the economic cost mounts and the pressure on local authorities grows. Every unanswered question carries a price, not just in lost income, but in public trust. Right now, satellites scan Etna's heights, but even the best technology can't answer every question. As volcanic gases shift and science races to keep pace, uncertainty becomes our new normal. For millions living nearby, vigilant monitoring is no longer optional. It's essential. Nature's signals don't wait for consensus. What we can't see may matter most. Share your thoughts below. What would you watch for next?